Amen. 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 Because somebody don't like you or you think they don't like you, you coming for the wrong reason. We Amen. should come for the Lord. Amen. Not for somebody. Not for somebody. Mm -mm. But we quit. Yes, we do. My message today is don't quit. Amen. So with that being said, y'all join me, if you will, as I ride the prayer from the elder be good job. Joshua chapter 3. Verses 14 through 17. Y'all better wake up in here today. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Y'all praise right. and worship. Y'all need to give me some of that. Come on. Not the praise and worship, but the atmosphere, yes. the attitude yes. that comes with that yes. worship. Amen. Y'all yes. come on now. Y'all yes. come on. Yes, Lord. We're going to read from the King James Version. I'm only going to read three verses. Um, uh, uh, Deacon Elect Lorenzo didn't ask me how many verses he, he just didn't ask so I ain't telling are y'all hear me y'all hear me amen. he was somewhere else all week yeah. amen so um, so we just gonna read verses 14 through 17 from chapter 3 so he gonna have to work this morning and go through all 13, 14, 15 verses that's in chapter 4 because he, he wasn't here last week, right? All right. Amen. Y'all, this is a word today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise and I think it's going to hit somebody where they at. Amen. Amen. Praise God, somebody. All right. Joshua chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Good morning, Miss Maya. God bless you. So glad to see you and the rest of the family. Praise Amen. God, Amen. praise God, praise Amen. God. When you have found the aforementioned passage of Scripture and verse coming from Joshua chapter 3, 
verses 14 through 17. And then we will go to chapter 4 when we get in the message. Amen. 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 But to, to, to make the case, let's read chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. Y'all ready to walk this morning? Amen. Amen. When you find your four mentioned passage of scripture and verse, you will find these words. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as they bear the Ark that were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overflowed all its banks all the time of the harvest, <clears throat> that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam, that is, beside Zaratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, fell and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. When I get to the New Living Translation, it's going to make a whole lot more sense. Amen. Amen. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. Mm -hmm. in the midst mm -hmm. of the Jordan mm -hmm. and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground, dry ground. until mm -hmm. all the people y'all say all the people all, all the people. people were passed clean mm -hmm. over Jordan mm -hmm. <laughs> ain't that good news everybody mm -hmm. I want to talk to y'all for a little while about how to get over okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right I don't know if y'all heard that. Yes, sir. How, to get, How to get over. Yes. 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 Come on, this. Bring it. You may take your seats in the Bring presence it. of the Lord. I don't know if y'all um, understand, because some of us have been going through for so long, we've become immune to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. I got a feeling I'm going to have to preach it to myself today oh, because ain't God. nobody getting it. But then again, maybe you are. That's why you're quiet because you might be one of the immune ones. Jesus. Praise God, somebody. Praise it's God. tough. We go through stuff so much mm -hmm. and for so long yeah. yes. that we have no idea yeah. how yes, to get over. Yes, Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we stuck there. Praise the Lord. Praise now, the Lord. now there, there's going to be a lot in this. There's going to be, and y'all tell me this, does it take a, 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 a decent portion of faith to get over? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, sir. Can I say something else? And y'all may not believe this, and I'm not talking about the building, but we need church. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't talking about playing church. And singing church mm -hmm. and hollering church. Okay. I'm talking about the function of the church. Amen. What it is, it is supposed to do, it is supposed to give us something to help us get over. Oh, yes, sir. Am I making any kind of yes, sense sir. here? Yes, so let's start with the faith portion first. An old Scotsman operated a little rowboat for transporting passengers. One day, a passenger noticed that the good old man had carved on one oar the word faith, and on the other oar the word works. Are y'all in here? Curiosity led him to ask the meaning of this. The old man, being a well-balanced Christian and glad of the opportunity for testimony, said, I will show you. Are y'all with me still? So saying, he dropped one oar and piled the other called works, and they just went around in circles. Then he dropped that oar and began to ply the oar called faith, and the little boat just went around in circles again, this time the other way around, but still in a circle. Are y'all following me here? After this demonstration, the old man picked up faith and works and plying both oars together. Mm. Sped swiftly across the water, explaining to his inquiring passenger, you see, that is the way it is in the Christian life. Dead works without faith are useless, mm -hmm. and faith without works is dead. Amen. Also getting you nowhere. 
but faith and works pulling together make for safety, progress, and blessing. You can't have one without the other. It has to work together. Amen. So the reason why a lot of us have not gotten over yet is because we go to church and we expect God to perform a miracle while we sit there and wait for it. Amen. I hope that made sense Amen. for somebody. Yes. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Now, if, 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 let, let us try to set up the text, if we will. In Genesis chapter 12, God made three promises to Abraham, which is called the Abrahamic Covenant. Y'all heard of that? Mm -hmm. And here, 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 here's the three promises that God made to Abraham. One, he promised him land. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Two, he promised him descendants. Matter of fact, he Amen. said he's going to be so many of y'all, if, if you can't count them like the sand on the beach. Right. Yes. And he also said, he also promised him blessings. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I got a question here to ask each and every one of you that are in the building on today. I, I'm, I'm not asking you what you think. I'm asking you this question. What promises has God made to you? All right. Mm -hmm. Because I know he has. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Amen. And more importantly, if you are listening, are you obedient? Amen. Praise the Lord. So God made three promises to Abraham. One, land, two, descendants, three, blessings. Now, along with those promises is going to come some obstacles. Yes. Yes. Can I help y'all see this? Mm -hmm. There were three obstacles. Now, notice there were three promises given, but there were also three obstacles that blocked the path to Canaan. Mm -hmm. The first obstacle was the inhabitants of the land. Mm -hmm. So they sent 12 spies over mm -hmm. to check out the land and see what's over there. They came back and said, I don't know, we can't go because them folks is big over there. Mm -hmm. Some giants over there, and they're going to clean our clots and eat us for dinner. Mm -hmm. and, and if y'all think about it, the obstacles that face many of us is people. Mm -hmm. yeah, man. Yes, it is. Yeah, man. Those same people that you got in your life, some of them good, some of them bad, but you can't get rid of them. So and therefore, um, unless they're gone, you ain't getting over. I'm just going to have to preach this thing this morning. Y'all understand what I'm saying. So, so who in your way? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the first obstacle was the inhabitants of the land. The second obstacle is the walls of Jericho. There's something blocking you from getting where you're supposed to go. So now the walls of Jericho, I want y'all to check out the dimensions of this and want y'all to see what the children of Israel was looking at as they was going to conquer it because you got a barrier that looks mighty large and you can't get over. The mound or tell of Jericho was surrounded by a great earthen rampart, which means it was a dirt mound pushed up against the wall. Amen. Or an embankment. Y'all know what I'm saying now. Mm -hmm. All right. With a stone retaining wall at its base. Mm -hmm. All right. The retaining wall, watch this, was some 12 to 15 feet <laughs> high. Mm -hmm. A basketball goal is 10 feet. Mm -hmm. So you, so I'm trying to point to y'all how high that retaining wall was. On top of that was a mud brick wall that was six feet thick and about 20 to 26 feet high. Oh, wow. wow. So you got the retaining wall. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you got another wall 20 to 26 feet high. Wow. And six feet why? We can walk across it. Y'all got me now. Wow. At the crest of the embankment was a similar mud brick wall whose base was roughly 46 feet above the ground level outside the retaining wall. Y'all missing it. Wow. 
This is what loomed high above the Israelites as they marched around the city each day for seven days. Humanly speaking, it was impossible for the Israelites to penetrate the impregnable basket of Jericho. I don't know if y'all saw that. What they saw was a wall 46 feet high. If you got over that, you got another one. You got to get over Mm. That's 20 to 26 yeah. feet high with on top of another one that's 12 to 15. Y'all ain't in here. Uh -huh. You get over one, how you gonna get over the other one? Amen. Do y'all understand? Does your obstacle seem that big? Yeah. Are y'all in here with me now? And look, your obstacle could be anything. It could be a person, place, or thing. Praise the Lord. So there were three obstacles that blocked them from getting to the promised land that God promised Abraham. Praise the Lord. The inhabitants of the land, there were some big folks over there. The walls of Jericho, which was impossible to get over. And the third one was the River Jordan, which was yeah. overflowing. Ah, yeah. yeah, somebody ain't in here. So I got another question for y'all. The first question I asked was, what promises has God made to you? Here's the second question. What are the obstacles blocking you or our path? Hmm. And it's probably the same amount of promises that God made to you as the same amount of obstacles you're going to have. Probably. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about anybody in particular, but I'm talking to all of you. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Are y'all here? Yeah. Can y'all see what, I, what I'm talking about here? Yeah. So here's another question. Lord have mercy, them obstacles is big, so I don't see how the promises of God is going to happen. Hmm. That's uh -huh. crazy thinking right there. But that's how we feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. So the question is, how do we get over? over. Y'all ain't going to believe this, but there are three things Come on. that the text shows us on so how to get over. Now, some of y'all ain't going to like the first one. Mm. Well, oh Y'all well. want to hear what it is? Yes, sir. Right. We don't want to listen to folks. We want to listen to God, so I ain't going to listen to anybody else. All right, so we need functional leadership. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Hallelujah. You can't get over on your own. Come if on, you man. could, you wouldn't Ooh. still be there. Come on, yeah. come on. Now we see where the church should come in. Yes. I ain't saying it is because every church doesn't do it. I was looking at Facebook last week. I don't care if they see it. Came to church here. <clears throat> Wanted counseling for me. I said, okay. Then they wanted me to marry him. I did. Then they got in trouble and needed assistance with housing. Wow. Huh. I did that too. Uh -huh. Had they rent paid for about six months. Wow. Jeez. With the goal of if we pay your rent, then you can save up for a car. Amen. Amen. Come on, now. Come on. That's it. They didn't do, it. didn't do it. I did my part, uh -huh. but they didn't do it. Got in trouble again after they had quit coming to church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I ain't talking about nobody, but the, but, but the example is just too good to not yeah, pass up. Yeah, mm -hmm. now. So now they call me again in deep boo boo. Uh -huh, mm. yeah. <laughs> Can you come over here? No. I didn't. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to church somewhere else. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise, the, Praise Lord. the Lord. But if it don't work out, you showed me thank you. Uh -huh. 
The reason why I brought that up is because that is functional leadership. Are y'all in the house with me right now? I met their, you know, take that away, Lord, forgive me, please. The church met their need. Minister Audrey, yeah, it was right in the middle of that. Because if I can't do something, I should know who can. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on now. You praise the Lord, y'all. So uh, are y'all with me up in here? Yeah. So what we need is functional leadership. They couldn't get over, and they were here yeah. at a place where we helped them yeah. get over. Yeah. Are y'all understanding? Yeah. What it was, they got over the big wall, but couldn't get, get over the second. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, now. Uh -huh. Are y'all with me up in here? Yeah. I got a new story for you. That other place ain't going to do it. Yeah. Praise right. the Lord. Mm -hmm. So now, I want y'all to see um, how we need functional leadership. Before we go there, I want to start off with verse 7 and 8. Praise God, y'all. Um, in verse 7 and 8, I want y'all to see this. The Lord told Joshua, Today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. It wasn't so much he was doing it for Joshua, but he needed a leader to get his people to the promise of mm -hmm. Amen. And, yes, and it was yes, first yes. Moses. When Moses died, yes, he chose Joshua. Y'all understand yes, where I'm coming yes, from. Yes, so they will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. God, give this yes. command. No, he said, give this command to the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. Those were the instructions from the Lord. Amen. So here's why we need functional leadership. Mm -hmm. The first reason why we need functional leadership is this. To pave the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to go before these beat up people. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't in here with me, yes. man, but it's all right. Do y'all understand? Look yes. at verse 14 and 16 and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, what does it say? Went ahead of them. Now remember, the Jordan River is flowing, overflowing. And have you all ever seen a river that is overflowing. Go to the St. John's and see what it looked like when it's overflowing. Go to the Swanee River and see what it looked like when it's overflowing. That water moves fast. Yes, it You get in there, call yourself swimming if you want to. You're going to get carried. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, 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 the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. It was the harvest season, season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away mm -hmm. at a town called Adam. Mm -hmm. Y'all, you gotta be there. Yeah. They got the ark feet hit the banks of the water. They didn't even get in there. A toe touched it. Y'all oh, follow me? Come on now. And the water started backing up. Yeah. Woo, Lord, have mercy. Not yeah. only did the water started backing up from that point, but on the other side, y'all ain't in here with me, yeah. and the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea. Jesus. Did y'all hear this? Yeah. What a toe can do for you. Okay. Praise God. Until the river bed was dry. Yeah. Then all the people crossed over near the town of Jericho. We need functional leadership. Don't think you're going to get over by yourself when God got a system set up to help you get over. But the one place we need to be to get help getting over, we don't go. Come on, Bishop. That's right. We want to go everywhere but there. Ain't nothing wrong with you going to Bedside Baptist. But ain't no leadership there because you're the only one there. Right. And you're the one that can't get over. Oh, somebody help me say amen. 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 The one place we need to be is where we run from. Amen. Yes. 
Lord help me, somebody up in here. Y'all understand where I'm coming from. Functional leadership is needed to pave the way. Because yes. I guarantee you, whatever you're dealing with, I, I'm a, can I talk, uh, sis, can I talk to the fellas real quick? You think oh, I ain't been where you at? Or what? Okay. All that stuff I be telling you, you think I don't know? Right. <laughs> Fellas, I know. Amen. How do I know? Cause I did it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've been there. You think you blowing smoke up my behind? No, you ain't. <laughs> Because I've been there, done that, drank the coffee as well as me. All right, now. <laughs> I paved the way for you Amen. so you don't have to. All right, Amen. now. Amen. Amen. Somebody help me preach if you don't mind. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? You think I'm boo-boo the fool and just telling you something to tell it? I know. All right. My feet wet so yours can stay dry. Amen. Come on. Amen. Does that make any kind of sense to anybody? Yes. Does that make any kind of sense to anybody? Can I tell y'all the second reason? What is that? To be patient and waiting for the others to get over. Mm. Be if you an impatient leader. Y'all don't get me what I'm saying. Look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Let, let, let it tell you. Because y'all don't believe me. Meanwhile. Y'all say meanwhile. Meanwhile. The priests who were carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant. Ooh, Jesus. Stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. And watch this. They waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan yes. on dry land. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole nation. Jesus. The whole nation. nation. Y'all ain't in here with me right now, but it's all right. It's all right. Y'all y'all bad with me as I move on over here. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody give the Lord some praise. We need functional leadership. Yeah, we do. Praise God, somebody. Yeah. Say it with me. We need functional leadership. Lord have mercy, somebody help me up in here. Can I can I break it down? Because I don't know if we quite got it yet. Because some of us hard headed. Can, can, can we break this down, y'all? For the hard headed people. There's three more things I want to tell you about functional leadership. Y'all ready for this? That was, some of y'all ain't gonna like this. It'll be all right. We'll get over it. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If leadership is absent, then nobody crosses. Oh, I'm right. yeah. Yeah. If you a leader and you're not present, okay. ain't, nobody ain't nobody going nowhere. Hmm. And shame on you if you are a leader and you Come absent. On. Amen. It's a problem if you a leader in the church and you absent more than you present. That's a problem. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. it is. And that oh, leader that's absent blaming everybody else but themselves. But you the one ain't here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. That's it. Come Don't on, nobody man. take this personal. I'm just telling you. You know it's true. true. It's the truth. Okay. Okay. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Don't nobody like me. Oh, no. <laughs> really? What do you care? Amen. 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 And then they come and tell me about it like it's people that love me so much. It's a lot of folk don't like me, but it don't matter. I don't care. I don't live for you. You don't pay my bills. You don't cook my meals. You don't drive my car. I can care less how you feel about me. And I'm going to go to sleep tonight well. Good. Good. 
because I don't care what you think about me. And I'm going to church to worship the Lord. I ain't coming there because you like me or not. Don't nobody take this person. I'm just telling you that. You That's know it's the true. Truth. Yes. The truth, though. I ain't even through yet. Leadership, you got to be present. Mm -hmm. The second thing I want to show you, if leadership is late, mm -hmm. then everybody drowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Think about it. You in the bed sleep. Mm -hmm. Are you somewhere where you, look here, responsibility is on the heads of leaders. Mm -hmm. And if you are a leader, you have responsibility. And if you ain't there, what about the people? They're going to step in that water and get dragged to the Dead Sea. Because you was late. Amen. Amen. Which means somebody else had to do what you were supposed to do. Which means their job ain't getting done. We had clinic on Thursday. And the interns came to my office because there was no water in the building. Mm -hmm. I had to go out there and open up the water mm -hmm. so they can wash their hands. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the leadership was late. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. And what was embarrassing is they walked outside to see how I did it. So when the leadership laid again, they know what to do. That's a shame before God. From a leader. Don't y'all take it personally, but you need to hear That's it. The, That's the truth, Bishop. Praise the Lord, somebody. Lord. And I'm sorry I have to use the bully pulpit right now, but I'm sorry. Yeah. That's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. You'd rather hear it now than be here in my office. Okay. This yeah. message is taking a whole nother turn, but it's got to go there. And y'all praise God. I ain't through yet. <laughs> I still got one more. Come on. Praise the Lord. If leadership is impatient, then people get left behind. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Nobody's there to pave the way for them. Mm -hmm. Nobody is there to protect them when the wolf comes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Come on. Somebody got to follow the leadership. Somebody. Somebody. Because they are there for a reason. And that reason is to make sure that you get over it. Ooh, somebody help me up in here. Can I keep moving? Move can I keep moving so we can get on up out of here? Amen. Point number one took a lot. <laughs> That's all right. That's, all That's, right. It. That's okay. So how do we get over? We need functional leadership. Did that make any sense? Yes, sir. Second thing we need is we need foundational leverage. Yes, we do. We need foundation on leverage. Mm. We need a solid foundation uh -huh. to work with. What do you mean by leverage? That is to use something to maximum advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm, I need some leverage. Y'all ain't in here with me now. And the thing about it is, we all have to work together. Can y'all see this? First thing I want y'all to see is, how do we get foundational leverage? We need divine intervention. We need mm. God. Amen. Oh, that's the biggest leverage we could have. And that's the one thing we run from. Mm. God. Because God going to hold us accountable and we don't want that. Leaders and followers. Praise the Lord, y'all. Without God, we would be nowhere. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1 in chapter 4. When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord Said to Joshua, let's stop right there. We need divine intervention. Second thing we need, y'all, is this. We need disciples. Mm. We need disciples. We need to teach somebody something. That's right. hey. Amen. Because as I'm, as I'm leading, I got to teach you. Amen. So as you get over, you're going to help somebody else get over. It ain't just about you. Amen. It's a problem with a church with the same people for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And ain't nobody new in there. And we dying off. Mm -hmm. We need Amen. disciples. Mm -hmm. 
Praise God, y'all. We need somebody to ride the momentum. We need to keep it going. Y'all understand? Look at verse 2 through 5. 2 through 5. Now, here's what the Lord said to Joshua. Now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you were camped tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulder, 12 stones in all, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Y'all didn't hear me. He said, go in the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark and pick up a stone and take it to the other side. Mm -hmm. we, need a we need a memorial, don't we? Which is the next point. Which is the next point. We need disciples to carry it on, but we also need dependence. Amen. 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 And we got to teach them something and where we're going to get it from. Look at verse 6 through 9. I'm going to move on. Six through nine. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children is, is, will ask you, what is those stones there for? Mm -hmm. Amen. Then you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing mm -hmm. when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel for how long? Forever. Forever. We got to teach them something. We need to get these kids and these parents in church like little prince back there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like Maya right there. Amen. Are y'all in the house with me here? Y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all don't look at me like I'm crazy. Amen. Amen. I might be, but y'all understand. <laughs> so the men did as Joshua had commanded them. They obeyed it. Mm -hmm. They took 12 strong from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the place where they camped for the night and constructed the memorial there. Where did they construct it? In the camp where they slept. So when you wake up in the morning, you can see it. When you go to bed at night, you can see it. And it's a memorial. Say, boy, I got over. Thank you, Jesus. And I can still see that river. And I don't want to go back. How many of y'all ever said you don't want to go back? Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't going to like this. Come on. How many of y'all did go back after you said you didn't? Oh, want to go back? I did it three times. <laughs> Ain't y'all tired? No, I got time. Ain't y'all tired? Yes, yes, Lord. Now, now listen, now listen. Some Sundays for some pastor. We can't get up here with the feel good message, but there needs to be something that the church needs. Therefore, every Sunday ain't gonna be one of them who rock. <laughs> Some Sundays are going to be a Sunday like today. Y'all bear yeah, with me because I'm not preaching you know, like this. Because you need you know. it just like everybody in the building needs it. Amen, amen. Y'all understand where I'm coming from on today? Praise the Lord, y'all. So Joshua, now watch verse 9. Watch verse 9. This is going to mess all of us up. Joshua also, who did that? Joshua is the leader of the leaders, right? Joshua also set up another pile of 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan, which was dry right now. In the <laughs> at the place where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. Their feet were there. He piled up rocks right there. Yes, 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 so yes, when yes. the water come back, them rocks going to stand above. Amen. Lord, help me somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody help me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Guess what, y'all? And they there to this day. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. So not only do we need functional leadership, but we need foundational leverage. Yes, we do. Because there's more people than leaders. Who you leading if you ain't leading nobody? If you look behind and ain't nobody there, you ain't leading nobody but yourself and pray to God you ain't blind. Mm. Anybody in here with me? 
Yes, Are y'all getting anything out of this before yes, I go to the last thing we need? Come on, come on. Y'all getting, you ain't nobody mad at me, right? Mm -hmm. Can I get out of that? Just convicted. Can I remind y'all of something else? Yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> Are y'all ready for this? Yeah. I'm not sure if y'all ready for this. Because yeah. this is why we say we don't want to go back, but we keep going back. And every time you go back, you find that same flood. Mm -hmm. The flood lingers. Y'all ain't in here. Y'all ain't in here. Every time you went back, what you left was still there. Yeah. Somebody talk to me up in here. Amen. It, it, it was still there. It, it ain't going nowhere. And they waiting on you. It's waiting on you. Yes. Yo, what's up? Hmm. That's right. Glad you're back, bro. <laughs> What the dude on the on on, on um, um that's my mama used to say, ooh wee, I got it. Come on, get it. Yes, <laughs> Are y'all? Am I lying up in the pulpit? It's still there. The only problem is the flood is worse. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. Let, let, let's, let's go to 14 through 18. Because y'all don't believe me. A, a, amen. Amen. I want y'all to see verse 14. Now remember verse 7 in chapter 3. When the Lord God gave Joshua leadership over the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Verse 14 confirms that he did. Watch this. That day the Lord made Joshua. That day the Lord made Joshua. That day the Lord made Joshua a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. And for the rest of his life, they revered him as much as they revered Moses. Now let's get the rest of it and I'm going to take my seat. The Lord had said to Joshua, command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come up out of the riverbed. They did exactly what God told them to do. Which means if you ain't present, you ain't going to listen to God. Because you're on your own. Y'all ain't in here. He said, tell them to get up out of that water. So Joshua gave the command. God didn't tell them. God told Joshua to tell them. Can I park that for a minute? Yes. Oh, this, is, this is a teaching moment yeah. here. I done came to some of y'all and told y'all to do something. Yeah. Or told y'all something. Yeah. And y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Oh boy, and then they start questioning me. <laughs> you sure you want to? <laughs> Where you think I got it from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. God told me and I told you. All right. I was obedient. You wasn't. Come on, Bishop. And when you question me, you question God. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't see it that way. Oh, Bishop, yeah, yeah. hard on us. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, man. He just, he just, he just, yeah, he is. He just, he ain't fair. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to do that, but he let the other one get away with it. God didn't tell me to tell them to do it. He told me to tell you. Uh -huh. Amen. Y'all, y'all gonna have to excuse me. Don't get mad at me. If I'm just telling it like right, my mama used to say, you just tell it like a T.I. That's just what it is. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, y'all. Praise the Lord. Am I right, Nick? Yes. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody yes. help me. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. If yes. you're supposed to bring sandwiches to the clinic, and you say, "Why well, I got to do it? Yeah, really? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I want you to run a men's group and Thursday night. It's a game on. I don't want to go do that. And the very day you don't do it, somebody falls. Because you went down. You were disobedient. I'm trying to move on so we can get up out of here. But do y'all you all see how important that was? God told Joshua, Joshua told them. Does that make any sense? And that's Bible, as the old deacons used to say. Praise the Lord. Let's keep going. Verse 18. As soon as the priests carried the ark of the Lord's covenant, 
came up out of the riverbed. They stepped off now. They're standing in the old dry land. They stood out of the riverbed. Just like it disappeared when that toe hit it. When the heel hit land. Y'all ain't in here with me right now. As soon as the priest carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant came out of the riverbed and their feet were on high ground, the water of the Jordan returned and overflowed its banks as before. So all this is why, y'all, you listen to me. This is why it's worse. The water when the priest touched their feet hit that water. It backed up to the town called Adam. Mm -hmm. So that water had to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So what happened to the town of Adam? It got That's flat. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't in here with me now. And see, this is the harvest season because when I was in California, we went up the mountains to go to Reno, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And that was the prettiest, cleanest water because the snow was melting mm. and it flowed down into the river yeah. and it was raining. Beautiful, clean, quiet, mm. cold. I had to get a drink. Yeah, get your so the water backed up to the town of Adam. So when they got out of the riverbed, that water turned loose from Adam and whoosh, right back right, where right, it right, was. Yeah, yo, right. So now you got a bunch of more water mm -hmm. coming at you. So if 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 you ain't if you hadn't crossed, you ain't gonna cross. Okay. Okay. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 listen, y'all. Once you crossed over, you cannot you go, go back. back. All right, now. If you try to go back, you get caught mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. raging torrents of the same river mm -hmm. you crossed, which is now worse. Y'all ain't in here with me. It's worse now. Y'all, 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 somebody help me up in here. And guess where that water is going? It's going all the way to the Dead Sea. And if you try to go back, you're going to get caught in that raging torrent of water. And it's going to carry your behind to the Dead yes. Sea. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Yes. Yes. You on that for a while. I love Say you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>